Uh, hello participants, uh, please note that we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. Uh, till the time I'm sharing our social media platform link, our communities link and our official website link. So guys go and follow us on our social media platform for relevant update and upcoming webinar.
Hello, Chaitali. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. When we will be starting? Yes, sir. Just uh, two minutes we will be waiting, then we will start the webinar. Okay. Okay, so let's start the webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar. Archie this side, I'm your host for this webinar. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will dare to help you out. Uh, moving ahead and talking about event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics Learning is India most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solution that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector, uh, every industry around the globe. Our expensive greenfield solution include that is a persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Today webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology. Guys, you just need to install the Meetup app in your device and in your phone. There you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow code of conduct. Please note that no one is allowed to take screenshot of this presentation and cannot do screen recording. If you have any technical question, please put question on chat box. Uh, we will dare to help you out. Today's speaker for this webinar is Sonu Satyadas. He is a Microsoft certified trainer. He has 12 plus years of experience in training and development in various Microsoft and open source technology. He is currently work with the Synergetics as a practice head. Uh, agenda for this webinar, you will get an overview on the topic and more. Guys, follow us on our social media platform like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for relevant update and upcoming webinar and workshop on more. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic, our speaker, Sonu, sir. OK, thank you. OK, so I think let's we'll start the session. I hope the screen is visible. OK, myself uh, Sonu and uh, I'm the speaker for today's session. And today we are going to discuss about the cloud native build back. The. New technology for building. 
uh, OCI compliant images uh, for your applications and we'll understand some of the features of uh, the builder packs and how it works and we'll see a simple demo on how we can do that. So cloud native build pack. It's a project initiated by Pivotal and Heroku in 2018. And it is primarily focusing for building the OCI compliant images, the container images. OCI means Open Container Initiative. It's a standard for building the containerized applications. So what's the benefit of OCI compliant images? It helps you to run the same image in various platforms, which supports the container technologies, including the Kubernetes or the serverless container platforms uh, and our uh, local systems or edge container systems anywhere. So that is the benefit of building the OCI compliant images. So typically we build the Docker images using the Docker command. The Docker containers, you use the Docker build command. For But is to create packs. So this will pack a builder pack is to technologies to build the container ages. So Heroku and Pivotal works together to make this cloud native builder packs. And what is the benefit? is it uses uh, build the pack from builders to create a without a docker file. You do, do not need to create a docker file. So all the instructions, how which image to take, how to uh, add the layers or compile the code, how to build this and create the containerized application. So instead of that, the build pack is simply taking your source code, identifying the dependencies and the project types and apply the corresponding build pack and then build the OCI compliant image. Cloud native build packs follows modern container standards such as OCI image format. As I have mentioned, the uh, OCI standard is the uh, cross-platform uh, standard for building the images. They take advantage of the latest capabilities of these standards, such as cross-repository blob mounting and image layer rebasing on Docker API version 2 registries. So the latest uh, technologies in the containers, like a uh, cross-repository blob mounting. So you can uh, uh, mount the uh, images from other repositories so means suppose if uh, you want to mount your images from one repository to another repository you can do that with the help of close uh, sorry cross repository blob mounting and image layer rebasing helps you to update your base image without rebuilding this image means you don't need to rebuild the entire image. Instead of that, you can just simply update your base image. For example, if you have created a uh, containerized image that uses maybe version uh, 6.1 of uh, a framework, but later there is an update has released because the previous version has some security issues or some maybe security vulnerabilities. So there is a uh, image version released that, uh, what to say, uh, uh, fixed 
those those bugs or that security issues has been resolved and a new version of the base image is released so what you need to do you have to rebuild the image using the new version of the image but it is not required now you can easily rebase the image just by changing this uh, underlying base image it provides the following functionalities like uh, build an application using the build packs the cloud native build packs help you to build the applications images using the build packs and rebase the images creating the build pack so if you want to create a new image or you want to rebase an existing image you can do that with the help of cloud native build packs so what is a build pack a build pack is a tool is used to transform a source code into an application image so if you have an application which can be a java dotnet python ruby uh, c sharp any language you can easily transform that source code into an oci compliant image using this build pack it's a primary job is to identify the dependencies required to build and run the project so usually in uh, docker containers what we do we build all or we will uh, collect all the dependencies or put into the image so that the application can run within this container that has uh, all the dependencies within it so the same process is done by the build pack that it identify the dependencies but there is no docker file or anything required so it scan the project and identify the project type identify the dependencies from maybe package.json file or maybe requirement.txt file or maybe the maven configuration files means pom.xml or something so it would identify the dependencies from the uh, configuration files and automatically build the image with all with all these dependencies auto detection process in the build pack detects the matching build pack so there are different uh, build packs available within the builder because one builder may have different uh, build build uh, build packs like a uh, .NET build pack java build pack uh, node.js build pack uh, go language build pack so which is the suitable one for the application so it will go and use the corresponding build pack to build that particular image so that means you don't need to specify the build pack name you just need to specify the builder because there are different builders and each builder will have a set of build packs inside it we'll see that architecture later it runs a group of build packs sequentially and the first group that succeed the analysis is selected as the set of build pack for building the source code so it's going to uh, use a set of build packs that scan the source code sequentially and the first group that succeeds the analysis is uh, used as used for building the image so that means the most compatible uh, source uh, sort of build pack is used to build the image the detection process depends on the project type that means the node projects uh, for node, node projects it looks for the package.json so if there is a package.json it will understand yes it is a javascript project if there is a maybe a requirement.txt then it will understand it's a python project so if there is a pom.xml then it may understand that is a java project okay so that means if there is a csproj file then it will understand it's a dotnet project that way so for building the images it's very very easy as you can see in this uh, screen you just need to go and uh, run the pack build command along with the builder name or without builder name means if you have set the default uh, uh, if you have set the default builder then you don't need to specify the builder name what you need to do is you just need build command so what is the benefit of building the image as you see here the pack build uh, the name you can optionally specify the uh, what to say builder name 
So the benefit of uh, using this is it's a it's going to create a small image. Okay, the output image will be very small because it uh, identify the source source code and create the images uh, by using the most optimal uh, base image. Software bill of materials will be. Uh, as simply as uh, like a product invoice, it uh, contains the list of products that we have purchased. Similarly, the software will of will contains all the open source and third party libraries list and configurations. So that's called a S bomb. Reproducible build. So you will be able to uh, rebuild the images as many times you want. You Interface that use images. Advanced caching is supported if the same builder is used for uh, building different images. You don't need to go and download this layer. Known rule. So there is no as a uh, root user, it uh, run as normal user for this means. Reasonable is uh, uh, if in use this uh, in the you need. These are the benefits of using a web platform in the kind of way. There are two phases come. What is the difference? What is the difference? Say what is this uh, uh, so it accordingly try to identify the best suitor build the image. Selected. It a group and You know, the matching back in the source that runtime, then simply the create an image for creation of installing all the dependencies in runtime and all the dependencies compile the code to be. And it is the end. We looking. Uh, 
और बिल्डर therefore all runtimes for object have supports a go java node js php python means a uh, uh, dotnet is not uh, go this hero to one this is one this is means kundu frames and to it is a uh, no participants can't see your screen and they saying ki we can't hear you proper voice is too breaking Uh, participants will wait for five minutes. Sorry, checking our uh, the network issue will come in few minutes. so i have reshared the screen is that visible 
No, sir, not yet. Yes, so now I can see your screen. Okay. What about the audio? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So here the network is down. That's why. Okay, so let's uh, try to continue. OK, so here you can see the list of builders. And each of this builder. Supports different. Uh, different uh, uh, languages and frameworks, as you see the Packeto builder. Is one that supports. JavaScript, Go language, .NET, Python, Ruby and so on. Even Java and Node.js it supports. And we have uh, we can also the you know, uh, publicly available builders. Okay, this will just give you a list of builders that is suggested by this uh, command. So a builder is a page that contains the necessary components to execute a build the process. So this builder is containing a set of build packs that helps you to scan the source code and detect the uh, language and framework and build the image. A builder image is created using and adding life cycles, build packs, and other files that are used to configure a build process. So if you see, there are two uh, images will be used. One is a builder image, and another one is a run image. I'll show you this later uh, in a bit diagram. So the builder image is created for uh, loading the source code, adding the life cycles and build packs, detecting the image, uh, sorry, detecting the uh, framework used in the source code. And once it is identified, it uses a run image to create the image. Okay. A builder consists of the following components, like a build packs, a set of build packs it contains, life cycle and stacks build image. What is build packs? A build pack analyzes the source code and identifies the correct set of build pack to build the image of the application. So, as you saw in console, one builder will have different build packs like a .NET build pack, Java build pack, a Go language build pack. There are also different versions. And each of these build packs will be executed against the source code to identify the type of the project as well as the compatible version. It is a kind of executables for analyzing the source code. And every build pack contains three files. So inside this builder, there are build packs, and each of these build pack contains three files. One is build pack.uml. Second is a detect.bat file, and the third one is build.bat file. So, as the name indicates, detect.bat is used to uh, detect the package and framework used in the source code. 
build dot bat is used to build that image. And the build pack dot toml file contains the list of build packs inside that builder and what are the different languages and frameworks used inside that build packs. As you see in the right side, uh, this is an uh, build pack dot toml file for .NET. And here it says what are the different versions of .NET supports. See, .NET itself will have a different versions like a .NET framework 1A09, uh, .NET framework uh, 20, so forth, .NET framework 2022, and so on. And there are some meta build pack which contains only the build pack .toml file, and it contains the references to other build pack. So it is that is called a pack. So it does not have any uh, uh, runtime stacks inside this or image stacks inside it. It is just a refer to other build packs. A build pack group is a list of build pack entries defined in the order which they will run. So a build pack group defines what are the different build packs we have to execute and in which order we have to execute. Because the build packs are modular and reusable, a build pack group allows you to connect multiple So it's just a logical grouping. That's a, it's a it's a logical grouping. And maybe builder be combined to create a Java builder tool. So when you want to create a Java builder tool, a Java installer build pack, a Maven build uh, build pack will be combined together. So it works as a single build tool for Java applications. A build pack entry is identified by an ID and version. So there will be an ID and version for every build pack. So that is uh, typically defined in the build pack.toml file. It may be marked as optional, means that build packs uh, can be optional. Build packs in the build pack. The build pack group but contains multiple build packs. A builder or meta build pack contains multiple build pack groups. So one builder contains multiple build pack groups, and each build pack group contains multiple build packs. Detection process with the build pack groups. When the life cycle exceeds the detection. To the detection process, it will process the build pack group. It finds in order to uh, in the order that the group are specified. So in builder in which the uh, group are defined, it will start executing the build packs inside that builder uh, inside that group uh, to to detect what language and framework is used. For each build pack group, the lifecycle will execute the detect phase of all the build packs in that group. That means within one group, there are multiple build packs and it uh, life cycle for each and every build pack. The life cycle is like the build pack group by order where uh, all the non-optional build packs in the groups pass the detection. So it will execute all the uh build packs in that group uh to find the suitable so if all the build packs which are now if if it is an optional build pack leave it even if it is not passing it's okay but if all mandatory uh, build packs are successfully passed then it will be group one which, which, which can be used for building the the lifecycle stages uh, for for uh, facts. So there is analysis that is analysis that build pack we use to optimize the 
export uh, traces. What different files that the build pack require to detect and um, optimize the code that will be restored in the analyze phase. In detect phase, it finds an ordered group of build packs to use during the build uh, phase. So in this phase, the actual detection happens. So the uh, build pack groups will be executed in uh, sequence and identifies which build pack group can be used to build the image. Restore phase means restore the layers from the cache because if the same image or similar images are previously built and if some of the image layers are cached, it can extract those layers from the cache so that the build process can be speed up. Build process means it transforms the application source code into a runnable artifact that can be packaged into container. Means it will execute the build command for the corresponding project. If it is Java, if uh, it executes the Java build process, means I think Maven build, right? So or if it is uh, .NET, the .NET build process will execute and generate the runnable files like a var file in case of java project dll files or exe files in case of dotnet and then it will be packaged into the container so that is a export process so export means it creates the final oci compliant image create is the phase which contains all these stages in one phase like uh, uh, analyze, detect, restore, build, and export. All can be executed in one go using the uh, create command. So if you say pack build, uh, build create, means it's going to execute all these phases in one go uh, for building the image. Launch means the end point for the OCI image. Means whenever we run the application, run the container there should be an entry point to start the application so that is executed to launch the application that is it's responsible for launching the application process rebase is another uh, phase or process that is supported rebase the application layers into a new This is what Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Share the screen to see the screen. Yes, sir. We can see the we can see your screen. Okay. So I was uh, explaining about the life cycles of uh, the build packs as a uh, you can see it contains an analyze, detect, restore, build, export uh, phases. 
and all these phases can be executed in one go using the create command. So when you run this create, it execute the analyze, detect, restore, build, and export. The launch, typically uh, when you run the entire application using the entry point of the image. Rebase is uh, uh, typically used to update the image, the base image of your container. Means if you have an application image that is built using build back, you can update this image without creating the entire image. Platform means a platform uses to recycle, build the pack, and the application source to produce an image. So where or how you are building the image, that is typically the platform. That means it provides the cycles, the uh, available build packs and the source code to create the machine. It's a pack CLI command, as I have shown, uh, 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 in, a, in my command window, so here, this pack is a CLI command that can be used to build the image. Suppose if I have See, this is uh, <clears throat> a, a pack build command, which is going to uh, build the image after executing all the phases which we have discussed. But it requires the uh, uh, pack image, so it will be downloading that builder image and then executing the pack build commands for that. So. Uh, well, it may take some time because the network is very weak. So the pack CLI is uh, typically used uh, locally for building the OCI images, but using the CI/CD pipelines like uh, Azure DevOps and local. Uh, installer. So in that cases, you will be using some kind of plugins like a Tekton is one of the example for that. So that you can say as the platform for building the images in the continuous tools. But if you want to use a cloud application platform for building and deploying, you can use something like a K-Pack. So that is another platform that helps you to build the uh, Uh, it is in the images. And if you see the stack, a stack is composed of two. Of the from which, from which the build environment is constructed. So what it is going to do, the build image dependencies source the builders and then start executing the build uh, detects phase and one is complete the, the corresponding build pattern and use the image to create the final image. So the actual build process is executed inside the build image, right? So the build environment is containerized environment in which the life cycle um, and thereby the build packs are executed. So that means build the pack uh, or build the 
stack process uh, uses a build image as you see here in the image uh, there is a build image which is acting as a like a simply say i can use a vm for building the application similarly the build image is used as a uh, platform or as a uh, environment for building the final image so it uh, load the life cycles packs source code everything and then use the run image to create the final Im uh, image the pack list will display a list of recommended stacks that can be used when in the pack builder creates along with the uh, along with each stack associated uh, if you are building a builder then you will suggest what are the possible uh, uh, stacks Build operation is the process of to produce a runnable OCA. When you run the command, that is that command, use the uh, detection phase along the uh, build image. So build contains the life cycle and build packs i have already mentioned it uses a build pack as an build image uh, uh, environment that load the source code it will load the builder build packs use the life cycles to detect in this picture which is given Sorry. The build image contains the life cycle and multiple build packs, like a build pack one, two, and so on. And it uh, takes the source code, the application code, execute the direction uh, command to identify which is the suitable build pack. And then it uh, creates the final image. So what are the different uh, dependencies it requires? Maybe it requires the uh, execution of multiple X that executes and creates the final image layers. Build packs are compatible with one or more stacks and a stack designates a build image and a run image. So every stack will contain one build image and a run image. During the build process, a stack's build image becomes the environment in which the build packs are executed, and it runs the and its a run image become the base for the final app image. So as I have mentioned, build image is acting as an environment, and run image will be the one which is used for creating the final image. Build packs can be bundled together with specific stacks build image resulting in builder image so what is builder image the builder packs can be bundled together with a specific tag stacks build image uh, that is that is going to create a builder because builder means it's a uh, environment or it's a uh, what to say image that contains the build image life cycles builder packs everything so that is uh, executed so that's why we uh, specify while executing the uh, build pack command or pack build command we specify which builder to use so it uses one build image and a different set of build, uh, build packs so in the command line i have showed you the list of builders builder images as you see these are the builders which is available What is a rebase operation? 
rebase i have already explained multiple times it allows the application developers or operators to rapidly update an image when it's a stack run image has changed for example so see if you have created one image maybe consider a .net image so currently the .net version which you are using 6.0 6 6.0 means that's a major version but internally it will be 6.481 or 6.401 something like that but that's the runtime version which you have used but later maybe after a couple of months uh, they have identified some vulnerabilities in the .NET 4.2 image, 4.2 or 4.8 or whatever image you have used. So what Microsoft used to do, they create the patches for updating the, uh, the, the runtime. So after fixing the uh, bugs or after uh, correcting the vulnerability issues, they will create a new version of the runtime. New version of the runtime means it is maybe 6 point, maybe uh, 781. Okay, 6.781. 6 the previous one is 6.402. So now the runtime 402, 6.402 is older one which contains some vulnerabilities and we have to use 6.781, which is newer version. So what we have to do, usually what we do is we rebuild the image to get the updated runtime because the current base image which I'm using is having the 6.402 as the runtime. But it is because it contains some security issues, we have a new version 6.781. So when, when we want to update our image, but I don't want to rebuild the entire image again and again. So what we can do, because anyway, these two are six version only. So there is no compatibility issues. There is no compatibility issue. Both are same uh, version, six version only, .NET 6 version. But the difference is some build version. Build version is one is 402, another one is 781. So we have to update that runtime's build version. So we can uh, update base with the entire image. So that process is called a rebasing the image. The image layer rebasing avoid the need to fully rebuild the application. As you see, you can uh, uh, use the pack and the name so it will uh, update the images base uh, image with the latest available uh, image which is compatible and what is the latest uh, available version so you don't need to do any complex process you just need to run pack rebase and the image name with the tag so it will update the base image with the most compatible and latest version of uh, run image build and run monolithic images so here we can see how the monolithic applications that contains multiple projects or multiple uh, languages or frameworks goes into a single application or single image <laughs> application you will be able to your project root image folder can be a image but the single image contains two different applications and 
you can run both but understand one is a publicly exposed one another one is not a public because suppose i have an express application which is used as the front end and uh, i have a dotnet web api application which is used as the back end rest api so i want to run both from a single container in that case it uh, <clears throat> it can be run in this way you will be running a single instance uh, of the image and you map the the port number 8080 to with a a uh, name name of the image it uh, runs your uh, maybe dotnet application and the uh, express application means node.js application you can run in a different port number like uh, docker run minus p 3000 colon 3000 and you can see the image name same we can specify the entry point as different so that it will uh, use a different entry point so it can be the folder name or file name that is acting as a starting point for that particular application so within one image you can have multiple applications and they can run in two different uh, port numbers it's possible with build packs and if you want to access the uh, uh what to say application which runs in port number 3000 you have to go and make a request to port number 3000 you can see this a react application which is running on port number 3000 and for accessing the one which is running in 8080 you can use that so here you see uh, inside the builder there is a build image and inside that we can have different build packs like a node engine with the node modules and go runtime with the go modules and when you build the final image the final image contains a run image which contains node engine as well as go engine both so because go engine is used for maybe running the backend application node engine can be used for running the front end application maybe a react so within one image it's possible to have multiple multiple frameworks we are installing similar way in one image we can have uh, run times or multiple applications if you see the run in the final output of that uh, monolithic application where we have the operating system and then we have the uh, system I have the first application runtime that is node engine with the node modules required for running the application and uh, there is a go distribution uh, that is built only in within the final okay and uh, there is backend server which is a go binary files because it's a compiled code so it's going to be the go binary and the build s bomb in the list of that is Inside this application, and uh, your post build application directory will be app space, and the launcher binary will be the starting point of your application. So when you launch the image, it's going to execute the launcher binary. So this is going to create a go if you are 
if you are using a build it's doing the things an automated way for example to detect the uh, dependencies in time and uh, building the images everything it does automatically now the question what if we have to customize the environments for example we have some custom uh, connection string custom port number or some custom values or maybe some custom package be executed or some custom script be executed so is there any way to customize this build process In, go and uh, use only the uh, predefined builders because predefined builders just go and execute in a uh, that is created or it is defined but most of the uh, applications we develop will have a different directory structure will different set of environment variables will have different to have some in single option or so the customizations can be done in these ways first build the environment or sorry, build the time environment variables means you can pass the environment variables to the application for building the images remix the build order so you can use the build the packs execution order with uh, some other build the packs so you can execute them in a combined manner or you can change the execution order <coughs> in your way inline build the packs means there is a project dot toml file which contains the project metadata or the build packs configurations metadata so in that you write your own script so that it will execute at the time of build process so you want to write some kind of customization inside the uh, configuration file so that can be executed during the build process docker file extensions is another new feature which is introduced recently so we'll see that later and you can also create your own build pack because if you are not satisfied with the provided build packs then you can if you are so uh, expert in that then you can create your own build pack also so these are the different options we have and we'll see the first one is build time environment variables so one of the most commonly used approach for customizing the applications or its behavior is to uh, use the environment variables for example you may have an application that is uh, uh, having some default set of port numbers for example if it is a node js application they use a default port number 5000 or default port number 8080 is used by maven applications but what if you have used a custom port number instead of 5000 you must have used maybe 4500 for node js or instead of 8080 you must have used a, some different port number so can i specify the custom port number while building this image because the builders are comes with some pre configurations and i want to customize those settings by passing my own value 
so you can do like we these are some of the uh, builders which is available as you see this is a uh, packeto build packs builder and it contains multiple build build packs inside it this is go build pack version 4.1 and packeto build pack for node js it's version 1.0 and you can see the documentation home page in this address. And if you want to customize or you want to override the uh, uh, to go version, which is used inside the build pack. So build pack, uh, at the time of creating the build pack, what was the uh, go version which is available? They must have used it. But later, if you identify that, okay, I want to update my Go version. So that build packs provide some set of uh, environment variables to customize it. For example, uh, in case of Docker, Archie, or Hello, is it audible to you? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir, we can hear you. For the speech. different environment variables like uh, you want to customize the MSSQL password that's an environment variable MS password or the collation type or the number so if you want to customize the uh, uh, configurations of images we typically use environment variables in the same way, it is also possible to customize. 
build packs. If you see the environment variables which is used here, the default version of Go language can be different, maybe 1.02, uh, which can be updated to a later version, or you can tell at the time of building to use the Go version as 1.14. Okay. Or you can use uh, the uh, project.toml file for specifying the environment variable settings. So that means it is possible to pass the environment variables through the uh, command, or we can use the project.toml file. As I can show you one example for this toml file, which contains configurations of build back. So here you can see the project dot toml which defines the configurations for the build process. So here you can see I have specified the port number, a custom port number is specified and here it is uh, containing some uh, configuration settings. So what are the folders, files and folders to be ignored while building the image? So this is used for passing the environment variables, right? So you can see port number of the application to be used is 8080, which is mentioned here. So you can either pass the environment variables through this file, or using the pack command. So this is an example for the pack command, how to pass the environment variables during build. Second is build order. So if you consider the packeto Full builder. It uses uh, the Go and Node.js in any order that is XOR is used. That means it will execute either Go or Node.js in uh, 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 during the build process. But we can specify the order in such a way that I want to execute the uh, uh, build of Go or Node.js, that, that means not going to execute both, it's execute either Go, Node.js. So packet of builder contains all the builder packs, but it is possible to uh, specify that instead of executing all the uh, builder build packages or build packs, we can say either execute only the Go or Node.js. So it, uh, helps you to reduce the execution time because instead of executing and detecting the project types, it uh, simply uh, use a specific builder or specific builder pack. And also, if you don't want to execute multiple builder packs parallelly, you can specify the order of execution. See, the Packeto Builder, Packeto Builder is one type of builder which defines a default build order. So in which build order the, uh, so that there is an order they have defined, but in your case, you can specify that, okay, maybe typically the Go will be executed first, and then the Node.js will be executed. But you can specify that I want to execute Node.js first, and after that only the Go need to execute. That means you can change or customize the order of execution. So that you can specify 
inside this uh, project.toml file. So here inside this group, inside this toml file, you can specify the order of execution. So you can see Node.js is specified first and then Go is specified later. So in it in this case, it will execute the Node.js build pack first and then it execute the Go build pack. But in uh, default way, the Go will be executed first and Node.js will be executed later. So since you have some dependencies or some uh, requirement where I want to execute some uh, build packs first uh, to uh, determine that uh, it has to go and execute. So here, packetos Node.js build pack group will be executed first. And then only it executes the goes one. But understand this feature that is remixing the build order feature is not supported in all the platform. Platform means so it may support in the command line environment in the local machine, but it may not support with the cloud version like a KPAC, or it may not support with the uh, uh, CNCD plugin. Right, so that means it may not. So this this remixing the order is may not be supported by all the platforms. So that you have to identify which plat which of the platforms supports the uh, remixing the order uh, feature uh, in the documentation of that particular builder. So Packeto, which is supports in CACD uh, pack as well as the uh, cloud uh, KPAC environment, but maybe the GCP's builder may not support it. So that means you have to verify whether it supports in that particular environment or not. Inline build pack. Inline build pack is typically used to execute some script or some kind of a task i can say it's a task because it it may be an a uh, script execution or it may be it may be another build pack execution so which i want to uh, execute as a process before start executing any uh, build process so that you can specify inside this project.toml file as you see inside this project.toml where we specify the build packs group, I'm specifying one inline script here. So ID equal to example slash logo, which is typically used for loading the logo file, means downloading the logo file and putting that logo into SRC folder. So what I'm trying to do here, before start executing the uh, build the process. I want to download the logo file from a particular URL and put it to the source code folder because the organization may update the logo uh, frequently or maybe updating the logo. So what we have to do whenever the new version of the application is built, it has to use a new version. Like a, if you are a Visual Studio user, you can understand that Visual Studio keep updating the uh, icon or logo of that particular version like uh, visual studio 2012's icon is different 2015's icon is different visual studio 2019's icon is different visual studio 2022's icon is different right or uh, similarly windows windows xp icon is different windows 10 icon is different windows 11 icon is different so every version of the project it's changing the uh, logo. So whenever I want to build a new version, I want to use a new logo. So such cases before building the application, I want to download the new logo what is available and use it instead of manually copying that logo. So that downloading the logo file uh, is a simple task which I want to execute before the build process. So inside the build packs groups, I can define this as a inline task. You can see this execute a curl command and this curl command is going to 
execute and download the output directory of this is the src folder so inside the src it uh, save that logo as logo.svg file and very very important thing if this task is failed then it will not execute the uh, remaining task remaining build the process docker file extensions so docker file extensions is a new feature introduced uh, uh, recently recently in 2023 uh, so this helps you to means there is a question always then why there is a docker file right because in in the beginning we have discussed uh, or we have explained the build the packs are used to uh, avoid the use of docker files why we have to talk about docker files see when we build the uh, images whenever we want to use some custom packages or some custom dependencies custom configurations Typically, what we do in older ways, we just add every uh, custom packages inside the base image because this is actually uh, required for building the image, but not necessary to use inside the base image. Like uh, it will just uh, download every uh, custom packages, and once the ba base image is ready, then we start building the uh, run image. But if you see, in this case, we are using different custom packages within the base image for producing the uh, final image. But in new way, we can use the dynamic integration with the Docker files. Means, what are the different uh, uh, packages we need? We can just uh, refer those using a Docker files extension. what are the dependencies required so you don't need to go and download that dependency now you just need to use docker file there so this docker file will be evaluated and then it identifies the dependencies and then it use that dependency at the time of build okay so build or runtime dependencies you can specify in a docker file so it may be a run dot docker file or build dot docker file is there so inside the docker file you will be able to specify the uh, dependencies list instead of downloading the dependency prior so here what what we do in the older approach in older approach we used to download and keep all the packages right so it will increase the size of the base image as well as it takes time because we have to download all the required packages inside the base image and then we start building so instead of downloading and keeping all the packages we just need to refer those packages names in a docker file and the docker file can be used here so at the time of building the image it uses those dependencies uh, in runtime. That means while running or while building, use the dependencies uh, by referring the Docker file. So there are some dependencies coming from Docker file. There are some other dependencies coming from another Docker file. So what are the different uh, dependencies required? We can get it from the Docker files instead of downloading and keeping them prior. So this will reduce the size of the build image and also makes things faster. Okay. 
just a minute let me verify the network connectivity Okay, I hope it's now visible. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's see how it works. You can see uh, the build packs, read the source code, and then using this build image, it will build the uh, dependencies. That means inside the source code we will have that docker files that is used as an extension it's not a typical docker file because this docker files will be used to refer the packages in case if you need any dynamic packages okay so custom package uh, sorry custom dependencies if you need that we define inside the docker file and that we come we read from the source code and then build and that it makes the dependency layers based on that. And you can see it uh, read the extensions for generating the final. So build the process, what it is doing, it uh, read the source code and then build the list of dependencies and the extensions, the build pack extension is going to identify the source code, it uh, read the source code and generating the Docker file. As I have mentioned, there are two Docker files we can use, run.docker file or build.docker file, depends on the environment. So in the build phase, it use the build.docker file, run phase, it use the run.docker file. So how it identifies or how it uses uh, those Docker files, you don't need to go and manually generate those Docker files. From the application source code, it uh, uh, detect those dependencies and then creating that Docker file. So the build pack read the dependencies and build the dependency layers for custom customized packages and uh, layers. It will be the extension of means the Docker file extension tool or plugin is going to generate the corresponding Docker file. And at the time of uh, running the image, it use this uh, Docker files to uh, get the uh, run. Running means not running the uh, application image in the local machine or in the cloud. While building that run image, it uses that Docker files to resolve the dependencies and creating the final OCI image. So this is the simplified life cycle of that. So we have the source code, the detect or uh, detect phase. What is the detect phase is going to do? It will detect the uh, dependencies and then build that dependency layers. So it will create the list of dependencies and create a, or download the dependencies for that particular application. And the generate is what it is going to do. It will use the uh, list of dependencies, what is mentioned inside the application source code. It will run and use the base image to create the uh, dependencies list. And based on the dependencies it downloaded, it uh, create the final application's base image add those dependencies and create the final image. As you see, the dependencies resolvement is happening in one way and creating the application image is a different way. But finally, we'll combine this together to create the final OCI image. Means the detect phase is to detect the uh, dependencies used inside this application and identifying or creating the dependency layers and the generate phase is going to run and uh, using a base image it create the uh, run image for the application 
and this dependencies will be added to the run image and creating because the export phase we have discussed, right? So export phase is responsible for creating the OCI image. So detect is going to create the list of dependencies and the generate is going to generate the base image means it a run or extend and create the base image for the application and the export phase is going to combine the dependencies and the base image for creating the final OCI image. So here is an extension as you see. This is for uh, creating a Docker file that is uh, that needs to be generated uh, by analyzing the dependencies. As you see, it's going to be an uh, uh, script extension that uh, runs at the time of uh, the detect phase and it is going what it is going to do it generates a build dot docker file as i have mentioned it creates a build dot docker file and you can see the cat command is executed to create the run dot docker file that contains this code what is that argument base image so it is using the base image name which is coming from here right so this is providing the base image name and this layer is going to create the docker file which is run dot docker file or build dot docker file and using that base image which is passed as argument it use that base image here and then run as user root and run a custom command for installing the specific tools for example here the curl command we have to install so apk update and apk add curl so that means it is going to install the curl command inside the base image the final option for customizing the build packs is to create your own build packs so if you are a beginner then it will be very very complicated process because it's requires deeper knowledge about the uh, dependencies run image base image the stacks as well as the uh, builder packs so uh, you can create uh, the the build packs using any language but it requires a very good understanding of uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, components of the build cloud native build packs like uh, what is a stack what is build packs what is builder how to use this life cycles and everything so you can use any language but the recommended language is to use the go language because go is typically used for this kind of open source app uh, tool building so you can refer the build packs author guide to uh, understand how to create this uh, custom build packs. Now let's see how to use the pack CLI because since uh, we cannot go and demonstrate the uh, CI CD tools or uh, the cloud based tools like a K pack or um, the CI CD plugin. So I'm just demonstrating this with the pack CLI, which is a tool that can be installed in our local machine. So the first thing is to select a builder because if you have decided to go and create uh, an image using the builder pack, the first thing that you have to do is to choose a builder so as i have shown in in the beginning there are different uh, builders available pack builder suggest command is going to provide you the list of uh, builders available as you see 
if you want to containerize a dotnet application so you cannot go and use this one because this is not going to give you the dotnet's uh, build pack because as you can see it contains python node.js java and go okay here dotnet is also available yeah fine dotnet is also there but which one is not providing okay heroku is not there i think the heroku 20 is image with the builder packs for yeah uh, go java node.js php python ruby and scala so these are the things so you can see dotnet is not provided by heroku okay so not the google one so this google one is i think it's for almost every one and here you can see uh, Packeto builds provide almost everything, including some static web server, static web pages, even you can deploy with the help of NGINX. Okay, so that is also supported. And the base image operating systems also different. So one is using Ubuntu version 20, another one is Ubuntu 22 and so on. So you need to refer the complete list of uh, builder for the supported build packs. So once you have identified, okay, this I can use to build my uh, image that you can either configure inside the project.toml or you can use uh, as a parameter while building the uh, image using the command. So you can set the default builder. So what is the benefit of setting a default builder so while running the pack build command you don't need to specify the builder parameter every time because uh, otherwise if whenever you build an image you have to specify the builder name so it's better to configure a default builder so that you can avoid passing the hyphen hyphen builder parameter in the pack builder command. So how to set a default builder in the configuration or in the uh, setting. So you can say pack config default builder and the name of the builder you can specify. So it's going to configure the default builder so that you don't need to specify the builder parameter. And next step, we can build the application's image uh by simply running the pack build and image name so optionally you can pass the path and the builder so if you have set the default builder then you don't need to pass this builder as i have mentioned this builder parameter is required only if you are not set the default builder and the path parameter is required only if you are running from a different path. If you are running this command, pack build command from the current project folder, then path parameter is not required. So it, it uh, identifies the current directory as the source code directory. So the mandatory three things are, one is the pack command, which is the base, then build command, which is a sub command, and the image name, that is sample app. How you can pass the environment variables? If you see, environment variables are one of the easiest way to customize the configurations or passing dynamic values. There are three ways we can pass it, either by using the command line arguments, that is CLI arguments using the hyphen hyphen env, or you can define those environment variables in a environment variable file and then specify the file path. Third one or third way of passing the environment variable is to define that in a project.toml file. See, this is the example. How to pass using the hyphen hyphen env. So when we use hyphen hyphen env, you have to specify it uh, as a key value pair, like a variable name key and value or the variable name, it's a value will be taken from the environment variable. 
okay the systems environment variable for example here you can say you are setting a system environment variable using the export command foo equal to bar so foo is the environment variable name bar is the value which you have set in the system environment variable and while building you can say pack build and then sample app you can either pass like a key value like a hyphen hyphen env hello equal to world so here this is the key and world is the value and the second one you can see env foo only foo only means foo is the key and value is coming from where the systems environment variables and then you can specify the builder build back and the path of this file everything can be specified second one is to define the env file parameter which is pointing to the environment variable file a dot env file or something so you can here also inside the file you can define the environment variables either in a key value format or just a key for example you you can set an environment variable foo equal to bar and then create an environment variable file like a echo en hello equal to world so hello is the key and world is a value slash n means in the next line we use foo only which means foo is the key and value will come from systems environment variable and we are writing this into an environment variable file so env file and while executing the pack build command we can specify the name of that environment variable file that is a second approach third one is using a project descriptor so descriptor is optional parameter because uh, that is typically used for specifying the toml file path so usually all the configurations we can specify means whatever customizations you want to do the for the build process can be specified in the project.toml file and uh, if you if your project.toml file is in the same folder then there is no need to use the descriptor okay simply what you can do uh, uh execute the pack build command without any descriptor parameter but if your project.toml is located in a different folder or a subfolder you can specify the path so here you can see inside the project.toml you can specify or you can add uh, this build environment section where you can specify the key and values like this name equal to hello and value is equal to world. Now I'll show you a demo of that. So how this can be executed. So Okay, so here you can see it's an example of Express application, the .NET Express application. See here you have seen the list of builders available and I'm using this uh, Packeto builder as the builder. So I can specify or I can configure a default builder or I can pass it through the command line parameter or another way is to specify the builder which needs to be used inside the toml file so you can see inside this io.buildpacks i can specify builder equal to what is a builder name that's i can specify and exclude means these are the files and folders need to be excluded during the build process and i have an environment variable you can see here this port number is 8080 so you can pass it like this also okay and here this is a express js application which 
in which I am starting the application. Uh, if I am passing the environment variable, it use that environment variable. Otherwise, it use 8080. Okay, so this is a very simple web application. J just uh, show the list of books informations. And when I go to Docker, see here, uh, let me open the Docker again. Here you can see, uh, I'm just uh, removing this. This express web which was there, I'm just removing it. See, these are the base build images required. That is, these are the builder images. As you see, Packeto builder, uh, builder images. And I don't have any other images inside this. You can see only two. And I can show you that this project does not have any Docker file inside it, right? You can see there is no Docker file. And I'm going to build this application image using the pack. So what I do, I'll open this command prompt. I'm inside this project folder. So what I can simply do, pack, build, maybe express demo like this if i want optionally i can pass hyphen hyphen path space where is my project folder so if it is current folder just a dot slash is enough or you can ignore this path parameter because it will automatically take the current folder as the parameter okay hyphen hyphen builder if you can specify the builder name here but I have already specified the builder name inside this project.toml, right? So this is the builder name. So there is no need to explicitly pass through the command line. So that is also not necessary. Builder parameter also not necessary. Or if, if you have not mentioned in the toml file, you can even set it as a default uh, builder. So I have since I have mentioned in the TVOML file, I just need to use a simple command. When I run this, see it is uh, pulling this image. Can you see? Packeto builder, builder jammy base. That is used as the builder. And you can see, it, since that image is already exist in my local machine, no need to download it again. So image with the name express demo not found. So it is creating that. A lot of errors coming. I don't know why. Okay, maybe this image how to delete and recreate. Okay. Let me try once again.
Where is some error? Okay, let me run this demo. This is exactly the same. Pack builder suggest. It should work. Okay, I think it's working. I think there is some configuration issue in, in that project. So here you can see it is detecting that it is using Node.js engine 20.09. Right. And uh, node modules not found. So it is building or reinstalling all the packages using the npm ci so it is restored all the packages the node environment is environment variables for the build process as well as the uh, run image creation okay so it executed the babel command which i have mentioned in the build process so here is the build command. So this build command is executed. And finally, it created this image. Let's see this. Yes, you can see the express demo. So now I can run this express demo. I'm just uh, going Docker run. Docker run minus minus rm minus p 8080 is the port which I want to expose and the app one and the image name is express demo, right? So this is what the express demo. I'm going to run this. See, server started on 8080 and let me access this application. Local host. 8080. Yes, you can see this is the application that I have. Right, so this is the Express application. Okay, so here what we have done successfully, we have created a Docker image using the <coughs> pack build command and this pack build command is uh, uh, taking the configurations specified in this toml file as you see here and it will build the complete image so if i want to try with the java that is also possible i'm stopping this so cd dot dot cd Java Maven. So this is a Java project. So we can try this also. Sorry, the pack build.
hyphen hyphen builder. And I think I can use. Some other builder. This is supporting Java. So anyway, we have this one, so I'll use this. Otherwise, we, we need to download the builder again. Let's try with this image. Yes, it is detecting the, the Spring Boot application, right? So it's detecting those 10 of 26 build packs participating in the detection phase. And you can see these are the build packs executed. Build process happens. Okay. It's done. So now. Refresh. We can see the sample app is there, so we can run an instance of this sample app. Docker run. So this is going to be. Sample app. So we can see the Spring Boot application is running. It's done. And I'm going to use the same port number. See, this is the Java application. It's a very sample sample application because I'm not from the Java background. So I have downloaded the sample application code from the build packs GitHub repository itself. So it's a Java application as you can see. Maven project which contains this dependencies. Right. It's a Spring Boot application. So that executes or that creates a Java application image. And we are now able to run this uh, as a container. There's no refresh option. OK, so you can see it's still running here. And we have tried the Express.js application as well as Java application using the PAC CLI. Without any Docker file, it is able to create the Docker images, right? So uh, it's a very, very quick introduction of the build pack. It's a very vast technology. If you go in inside this, you can learn about how to rebase this, how to perform uh, customizations by reordering, writing the inline uh, builder packs, or how to create your own custom builder packs. And there are a lot of things coming, all things we cannot demonstrate in this time. So here I have just given a quick introduction about what is builder pack. It creates an OCI compliant uh, container image. So what is the benefit of OCI compliant is it will support different platforms. Wherever you want to run your Docker image, it will uh, support to run the Docker image in multiple platforms. So that's the benefit of using an OCI compliant uh, container image. So that can be done without writing any Docker files you can do. So that's a benefit of uh, using the cloud native build packs. So hope this give you an idea about what is build pack. So we have faced some network issue in between. Uh, so I know it's uh, created some issue in the voice and the presentations, but yes, uh, we could complete this in the given time. So if you have any questions, you can post your questions. I'll be answering that. So we have 
done with the session. If you want to uh, sign off, you can do that. But if you have any queries, you can post your questions here. Uh, thank you for this session, sir. If you have any question, guys, uh, you can ask on chat box. I will be there to help you out. Also, I share this feedback form, guys. Uh, go and fill this feedback form if you like this session. Yes, 